The 3030 Winchester is a real dog, but this dog hunts. You know, the old Winchester 3030 has been around since 1895. Winchester actually made the Model 94 lever action rifle in 1894, but they didn't come out with that 3030 cartridge until the next year. And this was the first commercial cartridge with smokeless powder. Winchester called it the 30 Winchester center fire. And it became so popular that Marlin lever action started chambering it, but they didn't want to put Winchester on it. So they just called it the 3030. And for a while, I think they even called it the 3030 Marlin. And over the years, it became known as the 3030 Winchester. And that's what it's called today. That is a long career. And when this rifle and cartridge got started, it picked up steam quickly and soon became the deer hunting cartridge in North America. It was like the ultimate. And to this day, people say more deer have been taken with the 3030 than any other single cartridge. Whether or not that's true, who knows? But it sounds pretty cool. Unfortunately, in today's center fire market, this cartridge really is a dog. I mean, it's a 30 caliber, so it's the same bullet diameter as the 308 Winchester, the 300 Win Mag, the 300 Ultra Mag. All the 300s take these 308 diameter bullets. And the 3030 has such a small pile of powder, 30 grains of smokeless powder is generally what you load anymore. So you can only push that bullet about 2,400 feet per second. And in a handy little lever action rifle like this with a short, convenient carbine style barrel, usually a 20 inch, you lose a little more, you might be down to 2,200 feet per second. But here's the thing, in woods like this, you've got yourself a deer rifle. And it could be a bear rifle or an elk rifle. Because you're so close, you really don't have to worry about ballistic performance. You don't need long pointy bullets to reach 100, 150, even 200 yards. And that's what this rifle and cartridge are designed for. It's still a great woods hunting option. And if you ignore it, you're probably ignoring it to your unfortunate displeasure because over the years folks who use this combination absolutely love it it's just plain fun it's a slim trim little rifle to carry and to operate very quickly it just adds a whole bunch of fun to the whole process and if you're an older guy like me who grew up with country western uh, cowboy stuff and john wayne and the rifleman and all that there's an extra bit of nostalgia involved but for pure performance in woods hunting out to 150, 200 yards, the 3030 will do the job. You don't have to worry about high BC long pointed bullets. Just get your sights on that deer and take him. And if you need to swing and move, this rifle's capable of doing it. And this isn't the only rifle chambered for the 3030, of course. There are a lot of Marlins out there. There's some Mossbergs out there. And uh, if you wanna have some fun and add to your rifle collection, I sure could recommend a lever action 3030. Is this beautiful or what? You know, anytime I hunt in the woods under snowy conditions like this, I think about my first deer hunt as a kid. Black Hills of South Dakota, pine forest, snow coming down, absolutely gorgeous. It was a fairy tale experience. And I'm out there with my first deer rifle, Winchester 94 in 3030. I remember going to the gun shop in Mitchell, South Dakota to pick up my first deer rifle and I wanted to look at something I knew. Cowboy gun, 30-30, everybody had them. And the proprietor said, hey, how about this one? And he hands me a bolt action 243. I didn't even know what it was. 243, what's that? He said, oh, that's a flat shooting, great little cartridge. It'll way out shoot that 3030. I looked at that little bullet. I looked at the 3030 round and I said, no way. Give me that lever action. And I went off deer hunting that fall. Snow conditions just like this. Got my first deer running flat out with the 3030. Sort of been a favorite of mine ever since. But it really doesn't quite match up, believe it or not, to the 243. I probably should have taken that. Let's go up to the studio and look at some numbers and just see how the ballistics compare between a 3030 and this smaller 243 Winchester. Today's video is brought to you by Lightning Strike Firestarter. This aluminum tube has a ferrous rod on the inside and the striker is on this elastic cord 
with the waterproof cap covering the tinder reservoir in the handle. And inside of there are a bunch of chemically soaked cotton swabs that burn for a long time. And that makes sure you get your damp tinder in the woods going. And look at the spark that this thing puts out. The aluminum tube directs it all into one location so you don't waste any off on the sides. Pretty effective stuff. Lightning Strike Fire Starter. This is the large size. You can get a mini. And if you mention RSO in your order, you'll get 10% off each one you buy. If you buy two or more, you'll get $12 worth of additional tinder. You'll never be without a fire again. <gasps> well, the kids are calling me an old fud. Because I use a lever action 3030. <laughs> Works for me. All right. I said I was going to talk about the ballistics of the 3030 and compare it to the 243 because when I was a kid and I got offered that 243, I just didn't know anything about it. And I could not imagine that a cartridge that was roughly the same size as the 3030 and had a much smaller bullet was going to be effective on deer. Well, these days I study ballistics and I realize it probably is and it might even be better. So we're going to look at some numbers on my handy dandy charts as per usual. But before we do, just a little bit about the build of this 3030. You know, the 3030 was put out back in the 19th century in 1895 and back in those days they were still pretty much using rimmed cartridges. And if you've never studied a cartridge to find out the difference between rimless and rimmed, well, the rim simply means that some of that brass sticks out at the base and makes an obvious rim. And that is to keep the cartridge from going too far into the chamber, that's your head space, and make a spot for the extractor hook to pull it out. Well, to do it on modern cartridges, all they did was trim that rim down to be the same diameter as the, the cartridge itself but they put a groove inside of it and call it rim less just because it doesn't stick out. Easier in stack magazines. They don't get hooked up in, in a stack magazine like the Mauser started off with and the Savage 99 lever action has and most modern guns with vertical magazines underneath the action. Those cartridges have to sit on top of one another and as you can see here with the rim, they don't want to do that all that effectively. So you can have some issues feeding on those stack magazines. Now what these are designed for, of course, is the tubular magazine. And you've got that right here. Underneath the barrel is that tube, and that's the magazine that stores the cartridges nose to tail. And that explains why you've got round nose and flat nose bullets on your 3030 or any other cartridge that's in a tubular fed magazine like that. The idea is that there's potential for a sharply tipped bullet resting against that primer to function under recoil. It's a firing pin. <laughs> we don't want that to happen. Now you always hear that's why it's designed that way. And then someone says, well, have you ever heard of it happening? Well, no, I haven't. But then who goes around to, to test it? I don't know if anybody's ever done it, but I'm sure not going to take the chance. But those are some of the reasons why the 3030 is built the way it is. So here you see we've got some round noses and some flat tips. Pretty common stuff. Here's an interesting one. This is essentially a flat tip, but look at that big hollow. That's a Barnes X bullet. And I imagine that hollow tip is so big because of the low velocity with which that bullet's going to strike its target. And to get that copper to open, they've got a big hole in there. So when you get some hydraulic pressure in there from the liquid, when you strike an animal, I mean, that immediately opens up into that famous star or that X that the X bullet opens up into the petals. And then we've got a sharp tipped one, which we're not supposed to have except for that is a softish rubber tip. Not real soft, but it's not so hard that it's going to cause that firing pin issue. And that's something Hornaday came up with several years ago. They call it the FTX flex tip. And it allows them to have a little higher ballistics coefficient on your bullet. You can just see it right there. So there's an advantage, and we'll look at some of the numbers and see what those advantages really are. So there I was, a 16, 15-year-old kid in South Dakota getting my first deer rifle, and I went for the 3030 for the reasons I cited earlier. Then as I got a little older, in fact, just two years later, I started looking at the ballistics on this stuff and hand loading and went, whoa, wait a minute. That 243 is not such a dog after all. 
So here's our charts. You're going to get them flashed up on the screen to follow along. But I want to compare 150 grain round nose, which is pretty common in the 3030, to a 100 grain. And we're going to use a partition. The, the 243s use a lot of high BC, sharply tipped bullets. It's just one of the factors in a 243 that you you want to tumble to because it gives you a lot of advantages downrange. So the partition, of course, does not have the highest BC in the field for a 243, but it's a good all-around bullet, and it, I think it levels a playing field a little bit against these round noses and flat points and stuff, and it's a heck of a deer bullet. So 100 grain partition, the BC on that is 0.384. The round nose that I'm using has a BC of 0.232, so you can already see there's going to be an advantage to the 243. The muzzle velocity is a real big advantage. 3,100 feet per second for the 243 versus 2,250 for the 3030. Big difference there. Now, some folks will talk about the standard or the sectional density, SD. And in a 150 grain bullet in a 308, SD is always 226. Doesn't mean if it matter if it's a round nose or a spire point or a flat tip, it's the same sectional density, cross sectional area. And the 24300 grainers are always. 0.242 sectional density. So it actually, even though it's a narrower bullet, has a higher sectional density. So it's going to have some advantages there. SD is a useful measure for potential penetration. Of course, the bullet's construction and the impact velocity and all that's going to have a big role to play. But the higher SD generally suggests you're going to get deeper penetration than a low SD. So let's look at some numbers. Here are your charts flashing up. Now, the first one I want you to look at is energy because this is the big surprise. It really shocked me when I first looked at it. There's 2,134 foot-pounds of energy coming out of the muzzle of that little 243 and only 1,686 out of the 3030. I mean, that really surprised me. 150 grain bullet out of a 308, but it's going so slow. And I don't know... If you know this, but if you double a bullet's weight, you double its energy at any velocity, any given velocity. If you double its velocity, you quadruple its energy. So that's why you get a bigger advantage with that higher velocity, even though it's a lighter bullet. Something worth considering. So look downrange at the elevations and the drops, and you're going to see pretty quickly why the 3030 is considered at best about a 200 yard gun. Because at 200 yards, even though I've zeroed it three inches high at 100, we're dropping two and a half inches already at 200. And by the time we get to 225, almost six inches of drop. And of course, that 243 is just getting started. You know, that thing's not dropping six inches until after 325 yards. So big advantage there. Now, I don't know that anybody is going to pick the 243 over the 3030 because of the drops. Everyone just knows that this is a close woods gun. The 3030 is for hunting in the thick woods and the brush. And if you're keeping things inside of 200 yards and you zero three inches high at 100, your maximum point blank range is taking you out there to 200 and a little bit farther. So what's the issue? There are plenty of people who do all of their deer hunting and probably even their, their bear hunting and maybe elk easily inside of 200 yards. So if you're in that situation, why not a 3030? Well, some guys are going to say, you know, the energy loss problem out there at 150 yards, you're already down to about 1,000 foot-pounds. And a lot of guys think 1,000 foot-pounds is sort of the minimum for taking a deer. Oh boy, we're starting to lose our punch out there. Why not use a heavier bullet? So I pulled up a 170 grain bullet. Let's look at the numbers on that. Now we've got our energy jumping from 1686 with the 150. Immediately we're up to 18 and 11, but that's from the muzzle and it's still not as much as that little 243. Pretty amazing, isn't it? But it carries it a little further, 175 yards before we're getting down into the low 1,000. So by 200 yards, you're just under 1,000 foot pounds. Once again, here's your 200 yard. 3030. One improvement we can look at is that higher ballistics coefficient. What does that do for us in that FTX bullet? Well, the weight on that is 160 grains, so you're not going to have quite as much energy starting out. It's 1,720 foot-pounds, but 
because it's efficient and doesn't waste that energy pushing air out of the way, it's going to hang on to it a little farther. So at 225 yards, it's still just a little bit over a thousand foot-pounds. So going with a sharper tipped bullet like that FTX can help you carry more energy downrange. And if you look at the wind deflection, you're going to see an advantage there too. Now the 170 grain bullet has a pretty decent BC for this flat nose stuff or round nose at 0.252, but the sharply tipped one is up there 0.330, getting pretty close to that 243 bullet. So what's our advantage on windage? Well, at 200 yards, you're deflecting 8.2 inches with the 170 grain round nose, but the sharp tipped sharp tipped FTX is two inches less deflection, six inches. So there's your advantage. Not huge, but something worth considering. When you add up the drop difference and the energy difference and the windage difference, you might want to go with something like that. It gives you a little bit of an advantage. But again, if you're doing most of your shooting inside of 150 yards, I don't think any of that stuff really much matters in the 30-30. But I think you might agree with me, it's pretty surprising to see just how much more powerful that 243 is. And if I'd have known that when I was a kid getting my first rifle, I might never have fallen in love with the lever action. <laughs> but I'm glad I did because it continues to be just a nostalgic look back to the good old days. And it is one of the, one of the big firearms developments of all time was when they came out with these repeaters. You know, the first repeaters were lever actions. Uh, prior to that, everything was single feed, single shots. And they were just the cat's meow for a lot of years. But Mauser's bold action design slowly took over. And by the middle of the 20th century, the uh, lever actions were starting to fall by the wayside because people were reaching out farther with the magnums. Weatherby had a big role to play in that. And uh, that started to add up, but still there are plenty of people who hunt in the woods and we've got some really nice lever actions with which to do it. This is a Mossberg uh, 464, chambered for the 3030. You can see I put a scope on this one. You can certainly do that. There's no reason why you can't scope up a lever action. It doesn't look like a cowboy gun when you do it, but it helps reach out there and make a little more precision shots. So if you're starting to stretch past 100 yards and you don't like the open sights, you want to really aim precisely, put a scope on your lever action. And then you can get it with a curved grip like this, your pistol grip versus the straight grip on the old style. Uh, doesn't make a heck of a lot of difference, whatever your preference, but there are some fine rifles out there in the lever actions. Henry has a whole lot of them. Um, Winchester, Bighorn Armory, I don't think they chamber for the 3030, but there's a lot of good American-made lever action still out there. So if you like to have some fun and hark back to the old cowboy days and still have a darned effective deer cartridge and deer rifle, the old 3030 is still pretty hard to beat. Hey, I'm Ron Spomer, obviously, and I invite you to subscribe to this channel. Check us out at ronspomeroutdoors.com, our website. And uh, you can read American Hunter Sporting, Classic Sports of Field, a lot of the hunting magazines I write for occasionally. And we always appreciate our patrons. Uh, if you can join us on Patreon and help support these, that's what keeps the lights on and lets us produce these videos. So until we uh, see you next week with another one, Ron Spomer signing off with his usual, hunt honest and shoot straight. <music>